In this video, we're going to look at computing the hydrostatic force on a vertical surface. Specifically, here we have a plate shaped like an isosceles triangle with a height of one meter that's placed on a vertical wall one meter below the surface of a pool filled with water. And we're interested in computing the force on the plate. So we have the following um, figure given to us with the details of the different distances. We're interested in finding the force of the water on this um, vertical surface. So the first thing that we need to do when we're given one of these problems is introduce uh, coordinate axes here. So we're going to let y equals 0 represent the bottom of my plate. Um, since this plate has a height of 1, I'll have um, y equals 1 here. The top of the surface of water, since that's 1 meter um, above the top of my plate, that will be at y equals 2. So we have this vertical axis here going from 0 to 2, 0 as the, the tip of the plate, and then 2 as the surface of the water. Okay, so what do we need to do next? Well, let's remember that force is equal to pressure times area. You may find it easy to remember that pressure is force per unit area and therefore force is equal to pressure times area. So we're, um, for our setup here, we're going to be integrating um, pressure, which is going to be our density times uh, gravity times the depth. Remember that pressure was equal to rho g h, where h was the depth of the water, and then we had times the, the area component. So we're going to have rho g, the depth piece. Well, if we slice up our object here into lots of little pieces here, I have my depth um, occurring at some location y here. So we have this depth of 2 minus y, because that's the depth below the surface of the water. And then I have the area, which is going to be the area of this little strip. Remember, this integral is acting like summing up all my different pieces, so I'm concerned about the area of a little strip. So that's going to be this delta y times the width of that little strip. So in terms of the integral, I'm going to have some w of y, and then I'll have a dy. So this is contributing that area component, and this part is contributing the pressure piece. Um, the object that I'm actually slicing up is the plate itself, so I'm just going to be integrating from 0 to 1. So now our objective is to figure out what is this w of y um, going to be equal to. So we have two ways that we can go about doing this. We can um, use some coordinates and figure out an equation for the right half of this plate and an equation for the left half of the plate and do the right curve minus the left curve um, in order to um, figure out what the formula for w of y is or we can make use of similar triangles. So if we do this via similar triangles I have my plate here that looks like this I can drop a perpendicular down from the middle. So the bottom of this was at one meter here. I also knew that this height was one meter. Um, I'm interested in figuring out what this total distance across is as w of y. So I would have just half of that distance here would be some w of y over two. And then the um, depth that I'm working with here would be some, some y there. Okay, so we can say, putting a few more pieces of information here, half of the base of this triangle here would be a half. So I have um, the proportion that I can set up of one half over one. So for the big uh, triangle here is equal to W of Y over two divided by Y. Okay, so then we can cross multiply here. So I have y over 2 is equal to w of y over 2, which actually gives me that w of y is equal to y in this particular example. So I see that my setup is going to be this integral from 0 to 1 of rho g times 2 minus y times y dy, and then we'll be able to evaluate that. So let's look at the other way we could have found what this w of y is equal to. And that would be by placing our um, plate here on um, a set of x and y coordinates. So I'd let this tip here be the origin, which means 
that this um, upper right corner of the pleat would have the coordinates of one half comma one and the point over here then would be negative one half comma one. So if I wanted the equation then of the right um, curve or the curve that forms the, the right hand side of this plate, um, this would be using the point slope form of y minus zero equals my slope. So that would be my rise over one, one over one half times x minus zero. So I would get that right curve as having the equation y equals two x for the, whoops, the um, left hand curve here, this would be from um, y minus zero, zero equals, let's see, this would be one over negative a half times x minus zero. So this would be y equals negative two x. Since I'd be interested in the distance um, between those two curves in terms of y, I would be looking at Let's see, I'd have um, x is equal to y over two, and then we'd have x is equal to um, y over negative two. So our w of y would equal y over two minus negative y over two. So we get two y over two, or just y. So this just gives you another way to see where we're getting that w y from. And that is a method that might generalize and be nice for some additional problems as well. So I'm not going to go through the um, integration steps for this particular integral. We know that we're going to, I'll just do one simplifying step here. We'll have rho g, this will be 2y minus y squared dy. So we'd be able to pull out that constant of rho times g. And then we'll just have the 2y cubed over 3 minus y cubed over 3 evaluated from 0 to 1. And what we'll get um, for our final answer, plugging in the density rho equaling um, 1000 kilograms per cubic meter and using for gravity 9.8 meters per second squared, we'll get that the um, force here is about 6,533 newtons. And so that would be our final answer here.